When it comes to buying businesses or building wealth, it seems like everybody wants something for nothing. Um, I want to buy a business with no money down. I want to buy a business and put an operator in place so that I don't have to go to work. Um, and so on and so forth. And I think that, you know, instead of thinking, what can we not do? We need to get clear on what can we do and then understand how we build a flywheel around that so that we can build all of the wealth and freedom and mastery that comes along with it, okay? And the shortness of these three things, okay, is the same reason why people tend to get nervous and maybe not close on a business they're under LOI on. We're gonna unpack what those three drivers are today and how you can build momentum in them in, in your life. My name is Walker Dybel. I am the Wall Street Journal bestselling author of Buy Then Build, creator of the Elite Accelerator Acquisition Lab. So again, when it comes to buying businesses, there's a lot out there in terms of, you know, hey, I'm gonna show you how to buy a business with no money. I'm gonna show you how to buy businesses and put operators in so that you can scale to all these companies and, you know, not do any work, all, all of these other things. Um, and, and the thing is, is that like, I believe that, you know, look, I always, I always joke that I, what I sell is hard work, okay? And there's truth in that. It's sort of like, you know, if you go talk to a real estate agent and they say, okay, what kind of house do you want to buy? And you say, I want to buy like something in the million, million to two million. And they're like, okay, sounds great. Nice house. Um, you know, how much, you know, how much money do you have? And you're like, oh, none. I'm just going to leverage the seller and the banks. You know, it, it, like it, there's just a lot of undercurrents and resistance in terms of the things that you're, you're getting teed up to do. And so, you know, the, the thing is, is that what, what I've realized is that, you know, we all know that there's no shortcuts, okay? We just know that there's things that, 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 that are scalable over time and we wanna to try to figure out what they are and how we can, how we can enhance those in, in, in our life and what it is that we do, okay? The truth is, is that in order to get something, okay, from, from a seller or from the universe or whatever it is, okay, you've got, you've got to build sort of an engine, okay? And the way that you build things is that you give, Okay, you give and you give and you give, and that's what entrepreneurship is, okay? So that, what are these three drivers? Well, the first thing that you can give, okay, is time, right? And if you give time, you know, we often like to think of this as, you know, you're giving time for money. So you're an employee or you're in the, you know, service uh, industry or, or whatever it is, okay? So time, that's the first thing that you have, okay? Um, the second thing that you have is money, all right? So you can give uh, money. All right, and you know, the epitome of, you know, all money and no time would be like investor, right? And then, and then the third sort of thing that, that you have is skills, okay? And this is, you know, um, I guess I'll, I'll draw a brain. I don't know that that's a, you know, but, but you know, I mean, this is sort of like the, the that's a brain. Uh, this, is, this is sort of like the area where, you know, investing in yourself and, you know, all of these types of things, you know, work towards increasing, you know, your skill set, right? And so the thing is, is like, as I looked at this and I started to think about, okay, when it comes to buying a business, okay, what, what are you doing? So if this is your first business you've ever bought, you might be using an SBA loan, all right? And if you're using an SBA loan, you're using a lot of, you know, other people's money, in this case, the bank. Maybe you're utilizing investors if it's a bigger deal or whatever you're doing. But there's some kind of cash infusion of some kind. There's some kind of skin in the game in the same way that you might be, you know, buying a house, okay? So you've got, you've got a little money in this. I'm gonna call it a little money because you're buying something you know, of, of major money. So you've got a little money. Let's call that sort of like level one, right? And then you know, your plan, of course, is to go in and give it all of your time because you're getting all this money for free in exchange for buying this company and you know, you're signing a personal guarantee on it probably. And so the concept here is you know, you're giving it, you know, let maybe level one money, level three time. You're going to spend a decade or half a decade, you know, or more, do, you know, or your career in this business, building this business, right? So you're giving your time and a little bit of money, okay? Now, this is, I think, it, the skill side is where people really get hung up, right? So I'm going to go with, you know, you're, you've got to have some kind of minimum skill set if you're going to be, like, buying a company, okay? Um, you, you know, I... You know, if you go into the bank and say like, look, I've never done anything before, that, then it's going to be tough to pull this all together. So you have to have some kind of competency. And in fact, you probably maybe even have had some early career success or mid-career success or more, or you have some kind of skill set in that industry. So 
you know, I'll go ahead and say like, you know, whether it's relevant or not, you have, you're, you're a skilled person if you're buying companies, okay? So sort of, mid, you know, mid skill, little money, lots of time, all right? This is the model for the, the, the first time buyer acquisition entrepreneur sort of thing, right? And I find that where people get hung up when they're nervous about buying a company or they don't know if this is the company or they're getting cold feet, you know, cold feet, by the way, usually means they didn't do enough diligence. But the, but the truth is, is they're worried most about the skill set. They're worried most about like, do I have what it takes to do this business? I'm trying to understand what this person's doing, right? Through, you know, operational due diligence or whatever. And I'm, I'm getting nervous here, okay? It's very common, commonly what, what the root cause is. So once you can identify that, you can at least start to engineer and think about how you're gonna solve for that when you're, when you're buying companies. Now, the thing is, is that as I looked at this model, I started to realize um, I don't have a I don't have a name for this yet. Okay, I'm probably gonna call it something 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 stupid like the gift wheel or something like that. But but here's why. Okay, because I started to realize that you can use any one of these things and sort of get the other two. Okay, so if we went maximum on money, okay, and said, look, I'm gonna provide all the money. Well, if you're providing all of the money, then that gives you an opportunity to not only extract good returns, but you're also getting a bunch of everyone's time and everyone's skill because you're like the money guy, right? Or if you say like, look, I'm like the expert and I can, I'm the one that can, you know, sort of come in and give this, you know, smart um, um, consulting or whatever to engineer the right, you know, machine or whatever, then you're going to get other people's time and money. If you have, you know, maybe a lawyer or, or a doctor is a, is a good example of that, right? You know, um, in the epitome of the sense. And then time is like, look, I'm going to give this all of my time well, if you're giving it all of your time, let's say you're an employee, well, that means that you are actually getting um, skills, right, in exchange for your time and probably a little bit of money. So this is the model that really gives us clarity on what the things are that we have to give in order to receive, you know, wealth and, and cash flowing assets and everything else from, from the universe. Now, each one of these sort of branches, okay, has a lever okay a lever and so when you think about when you think about time okay you might say like okay well, what's the lever well the lever is going to be um you know uh talent or you know other people of some of some um aspect like so that could be you know employees is, is an obvious example right or, or or partners or whatever that might be so you know using you you know ex you know you hiring people in order to do more things okay um, I did another video about the uh, Dan Martell's replacement ladder. You could look at that and, and understand how you hire people in, in order when building a business, right? But, but you know, if, if it comes to money, all right, the lever is going to be, um, you know, I'll just put uh, other people's money here, OPM. And that means, you know, investors, right? Uh, it can also mean banks, right? But, but I mean, that's where you would go to get other money in order to leverage the fact that you don't have any, right? Or you have some. Um, and then skills, okay? You might be thinking that I'm thinking people, but I'm actually not. What I'm thinking is when it comes to skills, all right, when you look at the prep funnel for business acquisitions that's, that's in buy, then build, it always talks about, you know, understand what you bring to the table and understand, you know, the, the, the value that you bring. And so I would put that in skills. And, you know, maybe you've got high value skills like sales or, you know, under, you know um, you're skilled in the financial markets or you know how to, you know, build product or engineer or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, legal, legal, whatever it is. But the truth is, is that as you start to buy companies, okay, you start to get infrastructure. So I'm going to call it infrastructure. And the reason is because as you're building infrastructure, okay, or, or resources of some kind, okay, you're, you're, you're building assets that you own, okay, and those assets might be, you know, SOPs, it might be, you know, intellectual property, it might be a team of people in Nevada that do this one thing, and so I can buy that company and easily grow it, right, and so when you're, when you're expanding your skills, it's really expanding the core competency of the machine in which you're building, all right, so understanding the different, you know, um, levers that are available to all of these things. The thing is, is when we start early career, we sort of start in the middle 
and we start to work out, right? So, so you start to use all of your time and get a little bit of money and build your skills kind of simultaneously, okay? But what I realized is that the goal here is that as you sort of graduate each and every layer out, okay, what starts to happen is that you start to sort of turn this, uh, I'll call it a wheel, flywheel, all right? You start to turn the flywheel like this. And as you turn this flywheel, you start to build, you know, scalable, scalable, don't read my writing, um, assets, okay, and cash flow. Now, look, I'm just working through designing this model right now, and, and I'll just share with you um, one thing that I found interesting is that as you start to work your way outside of the... Uh, the outside of the rim, like as you build your flywheel, you start to get more money, more skills, more freedom, all the rest of it, right? But what's interesting is that, you know, when you go all the way to, to the maximum of money, what you have is wealth, right? When you go all the way to the maximum of skills, what you have is mastery, right? And when you go all the way to the maximum of time, what you have is slavery, which is the counter. So, you know, let's call it freedom of time. <laughs> but you know, the, the point is, is that you start to, um, you start to build momentum and then you start to build your skills, you start to build your wealth, you start to build your freedom and your scalability. And the more that you have of all of these things, the more, you know, wealth and freedom and, and mastery and infrastructure you're gonna have access to, the more opportunities um, start to expand themselves. Um, look, I always try to give an example. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give, kind of a, um, you know, one that has to do with business, but you won't necessarily think it will at the beginning. So I do a lot of executive producing on films and I have since the nineties. And um, I always get this question of like, Walker, why are you producing films? I thought you were like the buying businesses guy, right? And the truth is, is that like, I only executive produce films that have already come together in terms of, you know, their core team. So um, I usually at least have a script, I've got a producer, usually have a director early on, there's sort of a number of steps. And then what I do is I sort of invest and raise money around the project and then, you know, get it sold much like, you know, an M&A advisor would of some kind, right? So, so it's sort of like you keep the, you know, you make an investment into a project with a team around a certain intellectual property and then you exit it, right? So it's one of these where at the beginning, I was just doing like really small things, right? And then now it's like, I've, been, I've done probably 12 films or more and you know, I've got an opportunity to invest in you know, some really big uh, projects. I don't know if I can say, but I will say that I'm an investor in the new 007 project, right? For example, like I don't know if there's a bigger IP out there. And I made this investment probably four years ago, right? But the thing is, is like the more I got that turning, okay, the bigger the resume I built and the more successes I had, the more tables I got invited to and the more opportunities, um, you know, I was, I was able to participate in, okay? So again, um, example from my film industry practice. Same thing happened in real estate, same thing has happened in business acquisitions and entrepreneurship for that matter. If you are looking to buy a business in the next one to 24 months, consider the acquisition lab. Look, we built the acquisition lab at a time where there was no accelerators in this space. I understand we have a lot of copycats now, but here's the thing, we didn't just build um, an accelerator in a space where there wasn't one. I wanted to build the best one from the beginning. And what we did was we anchored in world-class education. Uh, we have a vetted community. Uh, we built out all of the tools and resources. We built a common language. We were on the search forum. We've got about 14 advisors on staff, and I believe we have a coaching call every single day, workday of the week now, at least one, if not more. Um, Check it out, it's rounding error if you're buying a, um, a seven figure business or more and we'll see you on the inside, acquisitionlab.com.